Hello and welcome to Tabletop 24 and thanks for joining us for another Marvel Champions unboxing. Today we have the campaign expansion Mutant Genesis. Now we have already covered some of our mutants on the channel previously and it's just been taking a while to get to this one so apologies there. But let's check out what we've got in this and where we are going to should have been seeing our mutant brethren for the first time. So As we can see, we will should be fighting off against some Sentinels straight away. Um, hoping so. They are obviously a key point in the mutant history. Wide up. So straight off, rule book. Just going to have our campaign in here. Um, some of the obviously how to set up the campaign and what's going to be doing. Not going to go too much into that purely on the basis of spoilers. Um, and we won't be going into too much detail in the scenario packs either. So just because obviously in case you want to play them, it's going to be a surprise. As always, we do have our campaign log on the back of the book and um, that gives you a bit of information about the campaign as you're going. Then we have our five deck of cards. Um, so we will start with, let's start with our heroes. And uh, get these around the right way. All right. So we're going to start off with Colossus. Um, Colossus is a favourite hero of mine. I think some of the story arcs he gets are quite entertaining, quite interesting. Um, so we're going to start off, let's start with Peter. Peter of Sputin, set up, search your deck and copy of a hand, sorry, set your deck for a copy of Organic Steel added to your hand. Aspiring artist, after you change to this form, shuffle a Colossus card from your discard pile into your deck. So getting a little bit of regeneration in the deck with a full recovery, uh, hand size is six, hit points are 14. So it's going to be quite tanky, which you'd expect from the Man of Steel as such. Um, Colossus have one, has one addition, kind of have one additional tough status card. Steel skin response after you change this form, give Colossus a tough status card. So you're going to be doing a lot around that tough status. One thwart, two attack, two defense, hand size of four. So we're starting to see back to those hog days. Um, just limiting down the, the hand size. Um, but I think with Colossus, there's going to be a lot around getting him set up. So we have our Ally Shadow Cat, um, which is obviously going to cause us a few issues with straight out of the box because we do have Shadow Cat in the, uh, as the other hero. 2-2 um, two, two with three um, hit points, three cost. Shadow Cat ignores the guard and patrol keywords and any crisis icons in play. Um, so that's quite nice. Uh, Beatrice Studio, Alter Ego, Exhaust the Studio, discard cards from your deck until your discard Colossus card, add that card to your hand. So really plays into that ability of building you, uh, your deck back up. Iron Will, Colossus get plus one thwart, so that's an upgrade. After a tough status card is discarded from Colossus, draw a card. So quite a nice... Um, Upgrade. We probably want to be using those tough against some ping damage from Retaliate, um, so you can draw mid-turn. Uh, second upgrade, Titanium Muscles. Uh, Colossus gets plus one attack. Hero resource, exhaust this card to generate a aggression resource for each tough status card on Colossus. Uh, organic Steel. So two uses two steel counters. Uh, after a tough status card is discarded from Colossus, exhaust this card. I remove one steel counter from it, give Colossus a status card. So it's quite sort of going to be quite bulky with that. So we've got another copy of Organic Steel. Then we've got two copies of Made of Rage. Hero Interrupt. When you make a basic attack, discard a tough status card from your hero. You get plus six attack for that attack. That gain gains overkill. For zero cost, that's quite nice. Um... Steel Fist, two cost, three copies of Hero Action, attack, deal five damage to an enemy. You may discard a tough status card from your hero, stun and confuse that enemy. Okay, so we're going to be doing quite a bit of damage with him, what we do expect. So we've got two copies of Bulletproof Protector, zero cost, discard a tough status card from your hero, choose, give your hero two tough status cards or ready your hero. So for zero cost, you either get the tough status card or lose a tough to ready your hero. So quite nice there. Plays into that sort of cheap hand cost as well. 
There were two cards of armor up and an alter ego interrupt. When the villain activates, change to hero form. You got a lot of control there of how you're going to be dealing with the villain. Um, and I think that's one of our first major ones where we're going to be changing form mid sort of alter ego, um, which is quite nice. Okay, so out of the box, um, we are going with protection. So we're going to start off with Nightcrawler, uh, which is three cost, two, two, with two health. Interrupt when an X-Men character will take any amount of damage from an enemy, spend an energy resource to return Nightcrawler to your hand to prevent all of that damage. Which is quite costly, but it could be big, This uh, sort of taking away all of that damage. Polaris, three cost, one, two, with three health. Response, after Polaris enters play, give an X-Men character a tough status card. Again, playing into um, Colossus' abilities. We have three copies of Protective Training, attached to an X-Men ally, and you only get a maximum of one training upgrade per ally, so which is interesting. Uh, attached ally gets plus three hit points. What would we expect from this from the tank? Three copies of Powerful Punch, two costs to hero interrupt, attack defense when an enemy initiates an attack, deal four damage to that enemy. And we've got three copies of Bait and Switch. So one cost, hero action for a thwart. The villain attacks you, remove four threat from the main scheme. So taking the damage so that you can get rid of it, which could be big um, on an almost um, game losing turn. Three copies of Perseverance. Uh, one cost, hero response. After you change form, give your hero a tough status card. We have three copies of Mutant Protectors. Uh, play only if you have the X-Men trait. One cost, hero interrupt for defense. When an enemy attacks, put an X-Men ally into play from your hand. Exhaust it and declare it the defender for this attack. Okay, so quite nice getting that, that hand out. And obviously you've got the artwork there for Nightcrawler, so potentially hoping for some synergy there. We've got two copies of Defensive Energy, which allows us to pay... Uh, for a defensive event, and it allows us to draw a card. So we've seen some of these specific resource cards that are going to do a little bit more. Um, I think one of the first ones introduced was in Rocket, um, which is quite nice to see. So that was our protection set. We do have a couple of cards in our basic. So we have Professor X. Um, three cost, three thwart, zero attack, and three health. Force response after he ends play, choose one, confuse the villain. Stun a minion, already an X-Men character. At the end of the round, if Professor X is still in play, discard him. Okay, so three costs to get three thwart and potentially one of these benefits. Quite versatile, but for me, you're probably going to be taking that ready. Aren't, aren't you? So, um, X-Jet, three cost resource. Exhaust the X-Jet to generate a wild resource for a player who's open to deal with the X-Men trait. Then we've got our team up for the set. Shadow and Steel for Colossus and Shadow Cat. For interrupt on an attack or a defense, when an enemy attacks, prevent all damage from that attack and deal four damage to the attacking enemy. So that's really nice. I think that's really useful for, for this setup. And then we've got our three copies, um, sorry, our single copies of Energy, Strength, and Genius, uh, which are pretty much standard with our new X Men artwork. Our obligation is Homesick. You may flip to alter ego form, choose to either exhaust it, Peter, remove homesick from the game, or discard the, this card and each toughness status card from your identity. If you discarded no tough status cards this way, this card can search. Okay, so really, some of these obligations are becoming either extremely punishing or a little less punishing. Um, but it's nice to see we're going to be able to remove it from the game. Some of them uh, previously haven't. We haven't been able to. Our nemesis is Juggernaut, big old eight hit points with one scheme for attack, store and toughness. Um, if this activation is an attack that gains overkill and piercing on the boost icon, so a really nasty uh, nemesis. And then we have the event R Rampaging Juggernaut, when revealed, discard each tough status card from each friendly character place a two threat here for each tough status card discarded this way so really playing against everything that Colossus is trying to do and then we have two copies of unstoppable attached to an enemy 
with the highest printed attack without a copy of unstoppable attached otherwise this card gains surge when attached enemy attacks the attack gains overkill and piercing at the end of this attack discard unstoppable so yeah it's again plays really against colossus because of that high printed attack cost or well, sorry high printed cost um slammed when revealed you are stunned if you're already stunned take two damage this treasury cards go um i'm not quite sure that that's the worst i wouldn't mind seeing that come out instead of some of others but um i think the it balances the set out quite nicely okie doke so we're going to go straight on to shadow cat so shadow cat kitty prize so through recovery, hand size of six, hit points of nine, set up, put your mass form grade into play, solid side, fade up, face up, uh, face control, flip your mass form upgrade. So, okay, so we've got another sort of form shifter. Then we've got two, two, two across the board. Selective intangibility, while you are in face mass form, Shadow Cat ignores the guard and patrol keywords. Okay, so let's straight up look at that form. So we've got phased. While Shadow Cat is defending, she cannot take any damage. Um, and Force Response, after you attack or defend in phase mass, flip this card. On the reverse, we have Solid. Zero Resource, exhaust this card to generate a physical resource for an attack or defense event. Response, after you attack or defend in solid mass form, flip this card. Okay. So we're getting a lot of forced flipping on there. Our ally is Lockheed. Uh, after Lockheed enters play, if you are in solid mass form, deal two damage to an enemy or phase mass form, remove two threat. Okay, so quite versatile depending on your form. Then we've got Kitty's Room. Alter Ego, exhaust Kitty's Room. If you are in solid mass, deal two damage. If you're in phase mass, you all one card. We saw a lot of this with Vision, um, doing different things with his, um, his own forms. Um, one copy of Acute Control. Hero response, after you ignore the guard or patrol keyword on a minion, exhaust acute control, deal two damage to that minion. So really using um, Kitty's ability. Intangible interference, one cost. After you ignore the crisis icon on a scheme, exhaust intangible interference, remove two threat from that scheme. So Kitty deck is really going to go into these complex scenarios. I think not probably as strong on our first sort of couple of sets. Then we've got Two copies of Phased and Confused. Hero form only, attached to an enemy, max one per enemy. Force interrupt, when an attached enemy would attack, discard this card instead, then confuse that enemy. So that's really nice to set up. Um, and that is enemy, so that could be anybody. We've got three copies of Shadow Cat Surprise. Two cost event for an attack, deal three damage to an enemy and ready your hero. Okay, so that's quite nice for two, for, for any two cost. Um, just going back to it, um, Shadow Cat has a hand size of five, so that's quite, quite going to be quite easy and cheap to use. Um, three, uh, sorry, two copies of Phase Strike, which is a three cost event, deal six damage to an enemy. If you are in Phase Mass form, you may discard an attachment with the text Hero Action or Hero Response from that enemy. Okay. Really useful and really versatile for some of those tougher um, attachments. Two copies of Airwalk, one cost event, remove two threat from a scheme, four threat instead if you're in phase mass form. And then we've got two copies of Quick Shift. Um, hero interrupt, when an enemy attacks, if you're in solid mass, change to phase mass. If you're in phase mass, draw two cards. Zero cost to draw two cards, so sort of hand cycling was quite nice, potentially. And that ability to flip when on on demand. Then we have our Wolverine um, ally. So out of the box, we're in aggression. So four cost, one thwart, three attack, two consequential damage. When Wolverine's attacks against piercing and response after your turn begins, heal one damage from Wolverine. So whilst he has that two consequential, he is essentially regenerating one of those each turn himself. So you potentially are going to get a little bit more out of him. Magic. Uh, so Peter's sister. Uh, three cost, one thwart, two attack, three health. After you play magic from your hand, spend a science resource, choose a non-elite minion, engage with an x one hero, shuffle that minion into the account. Yeah. Throw in a straight through a portal. That's quite nice. We've got 
three copies of attack training, another training upgrade. Attached ally gains one attack and two hit points. So quite nice. Then we've got three copies of Gatekeeper uh, attached to a minion. Attached minion gets plus two hit points and gains patrol. So plays into Kitty's ability. When attacked, attached minion is defeated, remove four threat from the main scheme. So building them up to take them down again. Then we've got three copies of Team Strike. Uh, so play only if you've got the X-Men trait. Hero action, attack, exhaust your hero and any number of X-Men allies. Deal X damage among enemies in play where X is the total attack of the characters you exhausted this way. Okay, so it can be really brutal, um, but obviously it's going to, be, going to come at quite a bit of a cost for that exhaustion. Um, three copies of Toe to Toe. Uh, one cost, hero action, choose an enemy, that enemy attacks you, deal five damage to that enemy. So really good when you are in that phase form because you're not going to be taking any damage off the, off the attack. It's just straight up five damage. And then we've got two copies of Aggressive Energy. Um, when you spend this card to play an attack event, that event deals one additional damage, which is quite nice. And then again, we've got our Colossus ally. So whilst not part of the main deck, you could strip him out and put something else in, um, unlike Shadow Cat in, in his deck. Um, four cost, one for three attack, two consequential with three health. Reduce the cost to play Colossus by one. Your identity has the mutant or X-Men trait, and then you gain toughness, and it's got toughness. It's coming to play with the tough car. You've got X Mansion, uh, Alter Ego Action, X, Exhaust X Mansion, heal one damage from a mutant or, or X Men character. Any player whose Alter Ego has the mutant trait may trigger this ability. So, quite useful for team play. And then we've got our Shadow and Steel, which we've already seen. So, a team up. And then we've got three copies of Ready to Rumble. Play under any player's control. Hero response, after you change form, discard this card and ready your hero. Okay, so it's gonna be quite nice. Uh, then our three copies of um, our energy, strength, and genius. Again, apologies, actually one copy of each of those. And now we're on to the obligation. So, permanently phased. Flip your mass form to phased. You cannot attack, defend, or change mass form. Exhaust key pride as an alter ego action. Remove permanently phase from the game. So quite important here is you have to wait until your turn to, to do that. And most of our obligations just allow you to, to deal with them. So that's quite interesting. And we've got the White Queen as our nemesis. So Villainous, while White Queen is engaged with you, you are confused. Shadow Cat's nemesis minion boost. You are confused. One, one with five health. Okay. Then we've got the Hellfire Club. When defeated, a player who defeated this scheme searches the encounter deck, discard pile, and set aside area for a copy of the Hellfire Pawn Minion and puts it into play, engage with them. Okay, so we've got two copies of that Hellfire Pawn, um, which is a one scheme, two attack, three health, with guard, patrol, and surge. So it plays into Kitty's abilities um, with boost of putting it into play, engage with you. And then we have an attachment. The White Queen, or attach, sorry, attach your identity. While telepathic restraint is attached to your identity, you are stunned. Spend two science resources to discard this card. Okay, so quite um, punishing for anybody that wants to be attacking. Okay, so that was there. So those are our two uh, heroes. So we're going to start going through a couple of the scenarios that we've got in here obviously as i said before we won't go into too much detail um because i don't want to spoil too much but we're going to just sort of skirt through so if you do wish to switch off now please feel free okay so first up we are going to hit with saber tooth um and after he activates against you discard the top card of the encounter deck heal damage from saber tooth equal to the number of boost icons discard this way so he's going to be really annoying, um, coming with 13, 15, and 18 hit points. Um, he has got a stalk by Sabretooth and an injured senator, um, where we've got to find the senator schemes. And then we've got Robert Kelly, which is good and interesting if you remember the original Brian Singer film. And then we've got Adamantium Claws, 
Animal Ferocity, Sabertooth Striking, Unrelenting Savage, uh, Medical Emergency, two copies, and Feral Rage. So that's his set. Then we've got the Avalanche, oh, sorry, the Brotherhood um, side set. Uh, so we've got Avalanche, Blob, Pyro, Toad, Homo Superior, two copies of Mutant Terrorists and the Brotherhood. Um, then we have got um, Mystique's set. And then we are into Sentinel. So... Sentinel is 2 2 with toughness, and obviously, this is the phase one. Um, when revealed, the first player searches the encounter deck and discard part for a copy of the production protocol side scheme, reveals it. Okay, so um, got quite tanky. So, 16, 18, and 22 on the various bits. Uh, we've got the Knight of the Sentinels and Mutants in the Mall. Um, we have some allies uh, that are going to be their captives. Um, so we've got Richter, Boom Boom, Cannonball, and Wolfsbane that we'll obviously be trying to save. Um, we've got the Sentinel Mark IV as minions. Uh, Gauntlet Beam as the attachment, learning AI, adaptive armor, self repair, mutant detected. Uh, warn the others. And then we've got the induction protocols, which we've got four copies of, and it is. When defeated, the player who defeated this scheme takes one random set aside captive ally and puts it into play under their control. So there's those allies coming back out. Um, then we have Zero Tolerance, which comes with Sentinel Mark 2, Sentinel Mark 3, um, and Energy Barrier. And it will lead into this deck. So we've got the Operation Zero Tolerance, the Sentinel Mark 5, Mark 6. Oh, sorry, that was into the Sentinel's um, encounter. Um, and we've got targeted for elimination of relentless robots. So that was our Sentinel set. Then we're into Master Mold. Okay, so we've got one scheme, two attack, a stalwart, toughness. When Master Mold schemes against you, discard cards from the encounter deck until a Sentinel minion is discarded. Put that minion into play, engage with you. Do not give Master Mold a boost card for this activation. So it's going to be quite nice to have a scheme and not having the boost card, but at the same time, you're going to be pulling out those minions. So it's going to be quite a tough set to go through. So he's got 12, 14, and 16 health with the Sentinel Factory Master Mold's agenda um, schemes. And then we've got Sentinel Mark 8, Unit Upgrade, Stun Beam, Master Mold's Children. Shields up and intruder alert and insert virus program in there. Then we have the mansion attack, um, which is going to come with um, avalanche, blob, pyro, and toad. Um, so we're probably going to see something very similar to wrecking crew here with the brotherhood of strike, uh, brotherhood striking attack on Xavier's um, multiple um, schemes. I think that these are different areas. Yeah, we've got the basketball court and the courtyard. Save the school, brother of beat down, ground swell, immovable, pyromaniac, hopping mad, so playing into the villains that we face off against, protect the students and under siege. So that's our next set. I'm just gonna get this one out because it's gonna run straight into it. Like I say, didn't want to go into too many spoilers, maybe as well for myself. As I like to I like to be surprised by it. Um as I think I've said before, I'm not a competitive player in this instance. I don't want to have to win everything. Um, but uh, so which playing into the blind draw is quite a nice thing. Uh, Magneto, 2-2, two, two, steady toughness. After Magneto attacks, place one magnetic counter, or sorry, magnet counter on the main scheme. So he's coming in with a solid 18 hit points, 20 and 22. We've got Asteroid M, Factory Online, the ruler of Magnus. Uh, as the main schemes, and then boarding party, orbital decay, M type sentinel, a um, couple of those, Magneto's helmet, Magneto's armor, Magneto's bubble, wrapped in metal, master of magne uh, magnetism, electric shock, electro electromagnetic blast, metal shards, 
Magnetic Missile, um, Magnetic Mayhem, Magnetic Sealed, and Seized. So there's a lot going on in that deck. And then what would Magneto be without his Acolytes? So Fabian Cortez, Emilia Vaught, Senyaka, Delgado, Uno Sion, Zeal for the Cause. And then the Acolytes as a side scheme. You've got Nimrod, Bastion. This is the future past um, modular. Uh, Nimrod's Portal, Bastion's Machinations, Nano Sentinel Tech, Brighton Police, which you can, sorry, that goes into our campaign. Um, so I'm not going to go into the campaign ones because that will lead directly into spoiler territory. And I think these are all campaign ones. So we're going to leave those out. Um, but that was everything there in for Marvel Champions Mutant Genesis. Um, if you haven't done so already, please check out other videos on the channel. Give us a like and a subscribe and we'll catch you next time. Take care.